In most fantasy football leagues, you draft more wide receivers than any other position, so picking the right one is critical to your success. We'll take a deep dive at wide receivers in this video, coming up now. Hello everyone, I'm Eric Lee. And I'm Gary Kurtzman, and we are the Fantasy Football Consultants. So Eric, we're talking about wide receivers, and there was just a fascinating trend with wide receivers last year that our viewers need to know about. Okay. Wide receiver receiving yardage in total, in, in total for the entire group, was down 7% last year versus the previous year. 7%. Now Eric, I don't know if I can convey to the viewers quickly and easily enough just how big that is, but just bear one thing in mind. Variations on yardage is usually about 1% per season. It, it's huge sample size, very tight. 7% is, is literally orders of magnitude of difference. And this, Eric, is going to have a huge impact on the draft strategy for wide receivers because this trend is probably not going away. Right? The reason why wide receivers uh, caught less yardage in football last year, at least partially anyway, is because more of the passing went to, uh, went to running backs. Running backs have now become basic your all-purpose Swiss Army knife position, do not bank your draft strategy on that trend reversing. And so what does that mean? Well, what that means is that your tier one, your top wide receivers are even more valuable than ever before. Why? Because those guys actually got more targets, more yardage last year than in any other year. So it's everybody else below tier one that's responsible for that entire 7% declination. So you want a receiver you can count on, be sure and target somebody in tier one. So that makes the tier one receive wide receivers really valuable. Absolutely. And who are we talking about? Where well, we're going to lead off, and this is not going to be any surprise to anyone, Antonio Brown uh, led the league in yardage last year, even though he missed two and a half games uh, with a calf injury. Antonio Brown is just incredible. Uh, what can Brown do for you? Be your number one wide receiver is what he can do for you. DeAndre Hopkins is your number two wide receiver. And I'm telling you, this guy has got to be saying to himself, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm telling you, I I, I don't know uh, Tom Savage or T.J. Yates, which is which is worse. I, I'm going to be charitable here with shall we say, below average league quarterbacking, Eric. Uh, all he managed to do was be in the top five in yardage, be in the top five in targets. This guy's not only matchup proof, he's quarterback proof. Uh, he is amazing. Number three, Odo Beckham Jr. Um, he is incredibly consistent. I say that, full knowledge that he had the ankle injury where he lost most of the season. Eric, before the ankle injury, he was on pace for more than 1,200 yards for 12 touchdowns, and he's done that every year for the past four years. So this guy is just incredibly consistent yeah it's just it's so tough playing against any of these three guys because when you're watching him you see that their quarterback is locked in on him and they're going to be getting the targets uh, absolutely absolutely they, they, those guys are all options 1a and 1b on their team finally rounding out tier one uh julio jones Derek, all he's done is average 1400 yards in each of the last four seasons i said average but actually he's literally received for 1,400 yards or more in each of the last four seasons. He is, he is the definition of consistency. Um, he's huge for the... Now, the touchdowns. The touchdowns is what bothers you with Julio Jones. Bear in mind one thing. He had almost as many red zone targets last year as he had in the previous years. Eric, it's a little bit fluky how many of those targets you convert into touchdowns. Absolutely, statistically expect that to regress to the mean, shall we say. The touchdowns are going to come back for Julio Jones. He's going to be a tier one wide receiver. Don't worry about it. And that's really the only difference between Julio Jones and the three receivers ahead of him. Uh, that's that's absolutely right. So um, we, we, you talk about how important these four wide receivers are. Well, how important uh, is it for our audience when they get into their draft? When do you select them in right. the first round? Right. That's the big question. Now, uh, for reasons that we went into on the running back show and we'll go into again on the mock draft show, it, it also is a very good idea to anchor your team with a very, very top tier running back if you can. So if you 
you're picking one, two, or three, you're likely going to be picking Gurley, Le'Veon Bell, David Johnson. That's where these receivers slot in. That's where Brown, Hopkins, and Beckham slides in. Maybe you get into Ezekiel Elliott before you get into Julio Jones. I'm talking about VAR. And if you want more about VAR, of course, you, you, we have shows dedicated to that. But that's where these guys slot in, Eric, is right after those top three running backs. Yeah, value above replacement is the key. And we will go on to Tier 2, which is right after those guys, uh, starting at number five with Michael Thomas, then A.J. Green, Devontae Adams, Keenan Allen, and Mike Evans. So, uh, we'll start at the top of the list with Michael Thomas. I tell you, I don't get no respect. No respect at all. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the, there's this perception out there, Gary, that Michael Thomas doesn't did not have a good year last year. Yeah. He actually did. He increased the number of receptions. He increased the number of targets, and he increased the number of yards. The only thing that went down was the touchdowns because the Saints were extremely unsaint-like uh, in the, the percentage of touchdowns that came from the ground as opposed to the air. You think that it would regress more back to the mean a little bit, and I would expect uh, Michael Thomas to be closer to that nine touchdowns he had the previous year rather than five. Yeah, and, and you really would expect to regress to the mean. It's so insane like to have, to have Drew Brees do this at the goal line instead of do this and there's no reason to think that it won't go back to what the normal trend is. It's not like they changed offensive coordinators or changed strategy. Con know. Continuing on in Tier 2, uh, again, these are the Tier 2 guys that will probably be in the second round uh, available in your draft. If any of them uh, you know, fall to the third round, you should snap them up. Number 7, uh, 6 on our list is is A.J. Green. I tell you, A.J. Green, this guy uh, is a model of consistency before last year. Every year, he has averaged at least 80 yards per game. Last year, he fell to 67 yards per game, which makes you wonder, is it over? Did you say over? <laughs> Nothing is over until we decide it is. Was it over when the Germans bombed Pearl Harbor? Germans? Hmm, i got to restudy my history. According to Jim Belushi. Right. Uh, John Belushi. All right, so um, let's... Uh Let's answer the question whether it's over. I don't think it is over for A.J. Green because of the reason why he struggled last year was not his fault. It was the fault of the offensive line, which was really poor. Andy Dalton did not have time to throw, and he didn't have the ability to get it over to A.J. Green in the passing game. Yeah, and that's so critical because A.J. Green runs the fly patterns for the Bengals. So that those routes take three to four seconds to develop, and if the offensive line can't give the quarterback three to four seconds, then it takes the fly pattern out of the equation. That, that really hurt A.J. Green a lot last year. The good news for the Bengals is they have addressed their offensive line and it's going to be better, so look for A.J. Green to get back to his normal performances. Um, next is Devontae Adams. There's, there's only two things that you need to know about Devontae Adams. He's the number one receiver on the number one passing attack in the NFL. When he's, tier, when he's, when he's playing with uh, Aaron Rodgers, he's incredible. In fact, in the last 22 games with Aaron Rodgers playing the full game, Game, he has amassed 17 touchdowns. Wow! 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 All I can say is wow! Let's go on. Next on our list is Keenan Allen. Look, Keenan Allen, since 2015, has caught more passes than anyone else in the NFL other than some guy. San Antonio guy, yeah. yeah. Who was number one on our list, <laughs> right? So well, why isn't Keenan Allen then higher on our list? There's always been two issues with Keenan Allen. One, his health, and two, his touchdown production. He solved the health issue last year. We'll see if he can duplicate that effort this year with staying healthy. But And he had a monster year. Over 100 receptions, nearly 1,400 yards. The thing about his touchdowns that you have to remember is he has never been a touchdown maker. Uh, and last year, he got six. And it makes you wonder... What if this is as good as it gets? It might be as good as it gets, folks. Uh, one ray of sunshine, it's kind of weird to say sunshine here, is that the Chargers, for Allen, the Chargers always get good TD production out of their tight ends. And Hunter Henry, their best tight end, is out for the year. So yeah. maybe this is a year that Allen gets a little bit more than six uh, touchdowns. Finally on our list is Mike Evans. I just have one question with Mike Evans to ask all of you out there is 
in the last 20 games. How many 100 yard games has Mike Evans had? Now, guess, what do you guys say? No matter what you said, You didn't say zero, because even I was shocked with that. He has had zero, and only one time has he had more than seven receptions. So he's not getting big uh, games out of Mike Evans. You also are not getting the touchdown production, because as the Bucks get closer to the goal line in the red zone, they have been spreading the wealth. He only caught five of the 26 TDs that were passing TDs for the Bucks last year. So temper expectations this year with Mike Evans. Yeah, limits his upside tremendously. So that finishes uh, the Tier 2 wide receivers. Let's jump into Tier 3, uh, and we're putting it up on your screen right now. What do these guys all have in common? Well, you know, they're reliable. In fact, they're uber reliable. All of these guys get 120 to 140 targets per season. Let's uh, compare that to the Tier 1 wide receivers that get 140 to 160 targets. So that's 20 targets for the season, or roughly one target per game that separates them from Tier 1. So that's not much. What's the bigger difference? the bigger difference is touchdowns. The bigger difference is the fact that none of these guys, whether well, all with the exception of Juju Smith-Suster, the, the top wide receiving option on their team, what they aren't is the top red zone option on their team. And let's face it, folks, TVs pay the bills in fantasy football. And that's why if anything in their situation changes, it would have to be due to injury. These guys all have, have some upside, but it would have to be through the touchdown production. Um, let's talk about a few of these names on the, on the Tier 3 is for starters Doug Baldwin and as I mentioned with upside this guy Eric probably has the biggest upside of I anybody in Baldwin. tier three um, he's he's definitely got talent not flashy amazing talent but he's just a terrific route runner huge chemistry with Russell Wilson and hey the big news is Jimmy Graham is gone Paul Richardson is gone now Doug Baldwin is always the option 1A and 1B receiving option on the, on the Seahawks the difference is the touchdowns he doesn't have the touchdowns that's 15 touchdowns last year, poof, that disappeared with Graham and with Richardson. Who are they going to go to? Now, the running back position? Maybe. Maybe. Uh, you know, Maybe they get more than one touchdown out of their running backs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but bear in mind, right Russell Wilson was responsible for all but one <laughs> touchdown last year. If they're going to go in the air, they're going to go to somebody. And Doug Baldwin is clearly your best bet for that. Like I said, I, I can't go hog wild and factor that into the stats, but if anybody has the upside to jump into Tier 2 and even in the higher portion Tier 2, it's Doug Baldwin. Um, Tyreek Hill, uh, next on the list, another guy with some upside because he's got a stronger on quarterback now with Pat Mahomes. Of course, that cuts both ways. Pat Mahomes is a rookie. Uh, he's also got Sammy Watson coming in there who's a uh, different body type but similar skill set to Tyreek Hill. That one could go either way. A lot of mouths to feed in Kansas City. A lot of mouths to feed indeed. Adam Thielen's got Kirk Cousins versus Case Keenum. Uh, that's going to give him some upside. That's, uh, let's face it, clearly a better passer. Uh, you know, Kirk Cousins being what he averaged top eight uh, over the last three seasons. Um, All right. And finally, one more. Let me okay. Let me focus. T.Y. Hilton. He's got a healthy Andrew Luck. That could be huge for T.Y. Hilton. So watch out. If Andrew Luck survives spring training and goes into the regular season healthy, you can probably bank on T.Y. Hilton at least getting to the top of this Tier 3, if not edging into the uh, into edging into Tier 2. Let's put up Tier 4 on your screen really quickly. You can see them. The first three, Gordon, Tate, and Fitzgerald, they are all number one targets on their team. So they should, uh, number one receivers who should get a lot of targets. Uh, uh, the one name on here that I want to talk about is... Is Chris Hogan. Look, last year, Tom Brady averaged per game two TDs and 286 yards. Those That production has to go somewhere because Brandon Cooks is gone. Danny Amendola is gone. And for the first four games, Julian Elliman has gone. So I think Chris Hogan is going to be real, have a real fast start to the season. Uh, you'll notice on all our four tiers, a name that has almost always been, miss, been on there is missing, Des Bryant. He's not a cowboy anymore. <laughs> he, uh, he was released, and you know, here's here's what the uh, interest has been in the free agency market. 
So who knows uh, where Des Bryant will wind up, and we might uh, adjust our rankings if he winds up in a good situation. Sure, he's certainly included in the rankings now. We just have to assume, for now, he's going to end up on the NFL's league average passing offense. So that's what's represented in the rankings now. Eric, uh, as you know, for the viewers, for the most updated rankings, and we update our rankings very, very regularly, uh, please go to fantasyfootballconsultants.net where you'll find rankings not just for wide receivers, but updated rankings for every NFL position. And please like, comment, and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, what are you waiting for? Hit the red subscribe button followed by the bell icon to be notified of all our upcoming shows and we'll have a lot during the preseason as well as the regular season. And until next time, we will see you then. See you next time.